Hello there, welcome back to my world of stuff. I'm sitting outside today, it's Monday afternoon, it's October the 9th, it's very warm. It's not heat wave weather, but it's really very mild, very warm, um, very late summer, which you don't expect, sort of halfway through October, so making the most of a nice warm afternoon to sit outside and just do a little review of A Haunting in Venice, which I saw at last yesterday at my local View cinema. Uh, this is the sequel to two previous films starring uh, and directed by Kenneth Branagh and written by Michael Green, based on classic Hercule Perrault, Poirot um, detective novels by the late Agatha Christie, the, the queen of crime fiction. Uh, the first one came out in 2017. It was the all-star, all-singing, all-dancing uh, Murder on the Orient Express, which I think took something like 350 million at the worldwide box office, a significant uh, box office hit. That was followed up by last year's, surprisingly only came out last year, Death on the Nile which was um, equally star-studded but a more troubled production because I think it was made during Covid Um, there were certain production issues and all the exterior stuff was done on sound stages and it sort of looked like it a lot of the time. It was equally star-studded but it didn't do quite as well. I think it took about $140 million and I think probably didn't make much money if anything. Um, This rapid follow-up arrives um, about 18 months later and it's called A Haunting in Venice. It's based on a short Agatha Christie story, which I think is called Halloween Story. I have to say from the outset, I'm not familiar with any of these stories. Detective fiction isn't my milieu, as it were, so I don't make a point of watching much in the way of detective stuff, although I do have a a soft spot for Sherlock Holmes, possibly because there's a sort of a slight superhero sort of tinge to that character. Uh, So I'm not really familiar with much of Agatha Christie stuff. I know the characters, I know Miss Marple, and I know Hercule Poirot. Poirot, I have trouble saying Poirot, but I haven't read any of the stories, probably never will. Uh, And I do understand that the Kenneth Branagh films have deviated quite a lot from the source material, but I think that's something that Christie writers now, script writers, tend to do. They add a new spin to it, they investigate the stories a little bit and, and do new things with them, which I think is fair enough, but I do understand that aficionados find that a bit annoying. Um, so I can't compare this to the book or the novel or anything previously. Uh, but I will make the observation that this film, again, um, hasn't made a vast amount of money as yet. It's ticking over. I think it's been out about a month and it's just staggered over the 100 million at the box office worldwide on a budget of about 80 million dollars so again it's probably going to fizzle out at about 120 130 million which means it won't be a huge hit um and it's i think watching the film it sort of rounds off this trilogy if you like it sort of takes the idea of hercule poirot towards the end of his career getting a bit jaded with his detective work it takes it full circle if you feel like and there is an ending of sorts which sort of suggests uh, potential for his future I won't spoil that here if you haven't seen the film yet this is very timely release I can understand why they brought it out now because it, it is based on Halloween story and it is apparently Halloween season um, because it does have supernatural elements and it does have some quite overt supernatural stuff actually quite surprisingly um, story uh, as you might gather from the title is set in Venice in 1947 Hercule is is now in sort of retirement he lives in quite a, a pleasant uh, villa um, has his breakfast doesn't really receive visitors when he goes out in the day there's a long line of potential clients waiting outside for his services which is quite amusing he ignores them and walks off <clears throat> goes about his business but one day he is visited by Ariadne Oliver who's a uh, well-known thriller writer who's had a, a string of best-selling books she's played by Tina Fey who's probably the best known supporting cast member in this film she wants him to attend a seance at uh, a look residence uh, as it is Halloween although he's not become he's not particularly aware of it uh, she wants him to debunk this uh, clairvoyant who she suspects is a fraud uh, when he gets to the house of course there's a lot more going on there's been a, there's been a murder um, the daughter of uh, one of the residents has died uh, tragically um, and lots of family and friends have gathered around for this seance but he uncovers um, not exactly a conspiracy but quite a convoluted web of murder distrust, distrust deceit and betrayal um, this is good fun. I mean, as I say, it's not my type of film, but I have watched the two previous films and quite enjoyed them, and I did enjoy this. I was very conscious of the fact that it's a, <clears throat> a less stellar film than its predecessors. As I said, the cast, the only really recognisable names, Tina Fey, 
who I thought was brilliant, of course, in the classic comedy series, 30 Rock. Uh, Jamie Dornan, who's obviously quite well known from things like the Fifty Shades of Grey franchise, which uh, mercifully I've never seen. And uh, sort of a cameo appearance by Michelle Yao. So they're the only really big names in it. But that's not to the film's detriment, because the performances are all very good. Um, by its very nature, it's a more uh, melodramatic film than its predecessors, because it's dealing with um, supernatural tinged things and that sort of arch uh, melodrama sort of word. I can used to think of it that I can think of to use for it at the moment but it works very well I, I do like Kenneth Branagh I think he plays um, an intriguing Poirot uh, obviously he over accentuates things a bit and there's that emphasis on his extraordinary moustache but it's a good performance I think he's a bit more <clears throat> not jaded but he's a bit more experienced a bit more less inclined to get involved in people because he's done that you know he's been there he's done that he sort of feels he's at the end of his career but it turns out he isn't uh, there's not really a lot more I can say about it to be honest it, it twists and turns in a twisty turny way that you expect of detective fiction there's a few surprises along the way there's some nice visuals I mean it looks beautiful because obviously it's filmed in Venice Venice is one of those places that hasn't really changed a lot you know it's architecture hasn't changed it hasn't had great huge tower blocks and ugly modernist structures thrust into its skyline so it looks very timeless uh, I think there's actually a couple of scenes that were filmed um, near the bridge where a major fight scene from the last Mission Impossible takes place which I did sort of notice because it's quite a distinctive bridge um, but you know Venice looks fantastic I mean you don't, gen you don't really see a lot of it because most of it is indoors but when you do see it you get that sense of Agelessness about it and that serenity of this town which has got you know, the, the ocean flowing through it I've never been to Venice I would like to go but it does have that sort of European timelessness about it and that's a major feature of the film even though you don't see a lot of it so I really enjoyed this um, it's good fun it's, you know, it's about an hour and 40 minutes 45, 50 minutes um, but it's um, entertaining I mean if you know it didn't grip me in the way that or science fiction or fantasy thriller would because that's more the sort of stories that fire up my imagination but as a whodunit it was um, it did the job so yeah I would recommend it um, as I say I'm late to the party seeing it I have meant to see it for a couple of weeks but uh, it was quite Sunday yesterday so I thought I'd nip out and see it um, Haunting in Venice is still in cinemas now I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 which is a pretty decent recommendation I think right thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed this little video if you have uh, why not like and subscribe? That would be a fantastic thing to do. Subscribers are jammed at the moment, they're not moving, so let's get some more of you on board. Uh, like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, is always appreciated. Until next time, I will see you. Coming up next, incidentally, will be another Doctor Who Revisited. I'm looking at a John Pertwee serial, and I will this week be making a start at last on my um, rebooted Doctor Who rankings series in time for the anniversary. So, plenty more content to come. I'll see you soon. Until I do, keep taking the stuff.